Before mounting your mandibular cast, place some shallow rounded grooves in three widely separated areas on your cast, similar to what you did in the maxillary arch, usually two at the back and one at the front. Dampen your cast before adding mounting plaster to it. Before mounting the mandibular cast, interdigitate the maxillary and mandibular wax rims in the centric record to make sure you have no interferences in the posterior regions, either between the record base and the cast or the record bases in themselves. Break up wooden coffee stir sticks or tongue depressors into small pieces. These will be used to stabilize the mandibular cast to the maxillary cast so it won't move during mounting. Mounting error can be as much as 1.5 millimeters if you don't immobilize your cast. Never try to stabilize a cast by using your hands alone. Use at least three of those broken coffee stir sticks to stabilize the maxillary and mandibular cast together. Measure between the two to see you've got one of the proper size. Then melt some sticky wax. Make sure it's very, very hot, molten, and add that to the places on the cast where you'll be attaching your stick. While the wax is still molten, press the stabilizing stick into place between the maxillary and mandibular cast. Then use a hot wax spatula and some more sticky wax to sear the wax and seal it to the cast. It won't stick as well if your casts are damp, so make sure they're dry. Do the same in the anterior region. You may need to use a slightly larger stick in this area. And again, make sure it's sealed well to the cast. Lastly, add a third stick at the back. And again, make sure it's well sealed to the cast so it can't move. Reseat the joined maxillary and mandibular cast on the upper portion of the articulator. Invert it on a stable surface. And then add a mounting plate and a mounting ring to the bottom member of the articulator. It's critical to make sure that the articulator is locked in the hinge position before mounting the mandibular cast. Check to make sure the sticky wax has not cracked or loosened from the cast. Then dampen the bottom surface of the cast prior to adding your mounting plaster. Ensure that your incisal pin is zeroed out, or if your centric record is slightly thick, you can increase the length of the pin slightly. Invert the articulator and make sure it's stable. Then close the lower member of the articulator and make sure you've got sufficient room between the mounting plate and the cast. Mix your mounting plaster similar to how we mixed it in the Max Theory case. Again, about 50 to 55 millimeters of water to the powder. As we described for the Max Theory cast, mound up the plaster in the center of the cast and taper it to the edges. Make sure that the plaster fills in the rounded grooves that you placed in the mandibular cast. Make sure that the mounting plaster is pressed firmly into the undercuts of the mounting plate. If you measured a large distance between the cast and the mounting plate, add some extra plaster right in the center. Don't bring it right out to the edges just yet. You'll be able to close that down and the excess should squeeze where it's needed. Then you'll be able to use a finger and tidy up the mounting. Things should be neat and tidy when you're finished. When the plaster has set, upright the articulator and remove the stabilizing sticks. Then open the articulator, remove the centric record, loosen the incisal pin, and let the wax rims make contact before tightening the incisal pin. Properly mounted maxillary mandibular record bases and occlusion rims should look neat and tidy. The incisal pin should make full contact and the occlusal surfaces should meet evenly around the entire surfaces and there should be no posterior interferences between the casts.